Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here, back with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Friday, June the 14th, 2024. So in today's detailed update, we'll be breaking down all those details that you need to be aware of with our area of interest in the Gulf of Mexico. So with that being said, here's a look at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowens at TropicalTidbits.com. There will be a link in the description below this video. And as we can see, the tropics do remain active as we move through mid-June here. We have our area of interest that is about to get going in the southern Gulf of Mexico. This has a medium chance for tropical development as from the National Hurricane Center. And then we have Invest 90L that has now been downtrending in chances that it has a 10% chance of tropical formation. But we also have a lot of Saharan dust that is also going to keep much of the main development region, including the Caribbean, at bay of any tropical development at least over the next one to potentially two weeks. Now, when taking a look at the latest seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, we do have that medium chance for tropical formation in the southern Gulf of Mexico over the Bay of Campeche near the Yucatan Peninsula, eastern Mexico there with a 50% chance of tropical formation in the next seven days. A broad area of low pressure is forecasted to form over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico late this weekend or early next week. And again, I do not want to forget about Invest 90L for shipping interest, going to bring quite a bit of rain over the open waters of the Atlantic. So if you're cruising along there, you might get some inclement weather, some gusty winds, and some heavy rainfall. But otherwise, this is not impacting any land, so we're not going to spend any time on it whatsoever in today's update. On to the global computer models as we go here into this video. We're looking at the GFS model. This is the American model simulating on what might happen into the future based on our numerical weather data. So this is a look at our average precipitation rate in millimeters an hour. So simply the lighter green shading means lighter rain versus the darker green and yellow colors indicate moderate rain and the red and magenta colors indicate much heavier rainfall, maybe some small hail, some lightning strikes and some significant flooding. All right, so when we put this into motion for this afternoon, we can see, again, a lot of the moisture still kind of carved up through here in southern Florida into northwestern Caribbean, southern Gulf of Mexico, into the Bahamas, bringing some thunderstorms, some heavy rainfall, and some gusty winds. Muggy, warm conditions there. And then, of course, over the Yucatan Peninsula is where you have your heaviest rainfall. But look at what's going on in Central America here near Venezuela and to the west Lots of thunderstorm activity due to a very active enhancement due to upward motion, a convective coupled Kelvin wave to helping to get things going here. And then by tomorrow or by Sunday morning in the next couple of days, we can really see the Central American gyre really going to start getting going. And once that gets going, we're going to start getting vorticity um, spin-ups. We're going to get these little spin-ups perturbations within the mean flow around this monsoon gyre. Little satellite rotations. And if those bundle up really well, we can get tropical depressions or storms out of this. And that's why the National Hurricane Center really, really watching things very closely. I would not be surprised if they do highlight an area down here in the next two to three days because the GFS model have been pretty consistently showing at something that could be more significant than, say, down here in the southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico. All right, so two areas maybe to watch. Yeah in the next possible week and a half or so. So now going into next week, we could see more moisture, this time really hitting Louisiana, Mississippi. So this is for Monday, June the 17th, 2024, at around 6 to 7 o'clock Central Daylight Time. And look at all of this moisture really getting funneled northward because we have this ridge of high pressure over the northeast. It's going to help to pick this moisture up along its way into this alleyway of heavy rainfall. And then, of course, down here, wow, some very intense rainfall rates over Central America as well as Tawanapak. Nasty weather there. If you're going on any vacation to a resort, probably not the best time to go because the weather is not going to be very good at all. 
showers, thunderstorms, gusty winds, that sort of thing. And then look what we got going on. The GFS model still indicating that we might get our first named storm. That This would be Alberto on our list of named storms if it develops and if it's successful at doing so in the southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico with all of this moisture that it is going to wind up, going to pick up all that moisture off the Gulf and it's going to translate it into rainfall. And wow, a lot of rainfall being concentrated. But that's not all. We have another system that the GFS model is indicating. And I made a community or I made a blog post on Twitter about this. We may have to watch this little guy down here. So we have our first um, spin that is going to develop here. That's the 50, uh, 050 that NHC is watching. Then we may have another second vorticity maximum that might try to kind of wind or kind of rotate around the main circulation. And if the background state down here is favorable, we might see our another named storm. And again, this is all happening in June. We all thought that oh, it's not going to be a very active season, but there are a lot of agencies predicting a hyperactive season. And this is climatology at work, not allowing a lot of development this early in the season. It usually doesn't happen until August or September when we really get things going. And in this case, we could get things going a lot earlier. So by the uh, by June 21st or so, so right around the longest day of the year, first day of summer, or kind of the second day because it's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon on the 20th we have summer. You can see again that vorticity maximum really going to spin up. And again, we will really have to see on where this goes. If we look at the previous model runs, the last four or five runs, we can see last night's run had the system hitting the same area like Pensacola, Panama City, Florida, Alabama, uh, Georgia. Again, this would be the 22nd and the 23rd. If we go to the previous run, we had something developing over here in the Gulf of Mexico. And then you can see very consistently showing something based on what it's showing down here. In fact, if we go to the 0Z run from last night, um, it did show potentially a major catastrophic hurricane slowing down, if not stalling, over southeastern Florida. If that happens, that would be total devastation on an exceptional scale that um, since Harvey made landfall in that area, it's essentially, would be really, really bad. Good news is it's not in the last two model runs from the GFS, but it is bear watching that Gulf of Mexico at least in the next 180 hours, 7 to 9 or 10 days, bear watching for tropical development. How much rainfall could you see? Definitely quite a bit of rainfall over the next, say, week and a half or so. In the next 7 to 8 days, you could be looking at anywhere between about 1 to 2 inches of rain over the Gulf. The southern Gulf states there of, say, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi. But if you're down here in Central America, you can see several inches, if not a couple of feet of rainfall due to training of storms that are persistent, they don't move very much, and they dump a lot of rainfall. To add more concerning news in today's video, sea surface temperature anomalies are well above average climatology speaking. They are even further ahead of schedule than what we had last year, and they are ahead of schedule than the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. So essentially, the Gulf has never been this warm this early in the hurricane season ever on record. And we are seeing some anomalies here even breaching almost 4 degrees Celsius above average. Again, departure from normal, we are well above average throughout the entire Gulf of Mexico. And that adds more heat to the air, more latent heat release. When we look at the actual sea surface temperatures here, we are looking at sea surface temperatures uh, along the Louisiana coast and over the northern Gulf of Mexico, roughly between about 30 to 32 Celsius. We have a little patch here, especially over the southern Gulf of Mexico, that are running well above average, 31 to 32 Celsius. So again, if we get that little, uh, if we get that monsoon gyre that is predicted, this is really, really concerning. A lot of upper ocean heat content in this area. Sea surface temperatures are record-breaking warmth in that area. 
and that is not what we like to hear about. When you take a look at the upper ocean heat content, definitely really high down here in the southern gulf. That loop current, very high in upper ocean heat content, and of course, over the western and northern portions of the Gulf, really looking at a record-breaking upper ocean heat content, especially in the Caribbean right now. We have not seen upper ocean heat content this high at all ever on record, and we are now outpacing some of the highest upper ocean heat content in satellite modern era that dates back to the 1800s. In fact, we're even higher than we were last year and than what we were in 2020. Even 2005, we were well ahead of that, and that gave us 28 named storms. Uh, 2020 gave us 30 named storms, and what could this season bring? That is a huge question mark right now, but right now, it is looking very, very active um, in the Atlantic hurricane season once we go into August, September, and especially in October. But anyways, if you did enjoy today's detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion on our area of interest in the southern Gulf of Mexico, please be safe, folks. This is going to bring a lot of heavy rainfall, significant catastrophic flooding. You don't need a name storm necessarily to get something like this. All you need is a storm to really move slowly, pick up a lot of moisture, and it's game on. So please be safe, folks. I will continue doing advisory package updates on this system as long as it remains a threat to these areas of Mexico, the southern Gulf of Mexico, including for the Bay of Campeche, including the Yucatan Peninsula. And then we'll have to look beyond that for more possible tropical development in early July, perhaps, over much of the main development region. That's for another video. But otherwise, Thank you all for watching. Share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the section below, and I will keep you all updated. I will have another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion tomorrow at around 2 or 3 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Otherwise, thank you for watching.